All right. So today we're going to talk through um, Rebuild Philadelphia. And of course, um, what's driving the conversation is access to capital. Um, for most of you who identify as women business enterprises, minority business enterprises, we also um, serve the community of LGBTQ, as well as veterans and the disabled. PIDC um, prides themselves in being able to drive growth to every corner of Philadelphia. PIDC's vision for um, Philadelphia's economy um, is clear cut. Um, I'm going to move, move these bars up. Um, so we um, pride ourselves. Oh, I'm going too far. Here we go. Um, so a Philadelphia economy that is diversified, growing, and inclusive as it drives jobs, um, investment, tax revenues, of course, and revitalization throughout the city, producing a high quality of life for its residents, businesses, visitors, and workers. And as we talk through Rebuild Philadelphia, um, one aspect of the conversation is producing a high quality of life for our youth. PIDC connects people, places, and opportunities in an effort to, of course, spur investment, support your business growth, and foster a development that creates jobs, revitalizes neighborhoods, and drives growth to every corner of Philadelphia. Now, when we talk through our core strategies, one, of course, is supporting growing businesses such as yourself and investing in the high impact community revitalization. You will notice that most of the communities within Philadelphia that have a business corridor provide um, a huge opportunity to be able to drive that impact. And you want to create workplaces for the future. When you think about um, your actual business enterprise and any particular scope of project and what that looks like in being able to bring in union workers, non-union workers. Um, but when you're creating those workplaces for the future, you're ultimately creating the opportunity for one of your employees to, you know, create a future opportunity for um, their families. And we do this um, by, of course, providing you with business support services to be able to drive the local economy. Um, as Marla mentioned earlier, we have a number of resources and services to be able to support your growth whether it's the idea of um, increasing or supplementing your business plans. Um, other opportunities might be, you know, in developing what your projection plan could look like over a three to five year period. So you've identified the opportunity to be able to drive your business, but what does that look like in terms of the numbers and the narrative that it supports? For us, this is a typical small business profile. Um, you know, as we talk through Rebuild Philadelphia, this doesn't necessarily apply in that approach, but um, the perfect um, business profile for us is a business that is either approaching its second year or has been two years or more in business, approaching annual revenues of $100,000. And basically what that means is if you, fall your, if you find yourself um, with annual revenues kind of in that seventy-five dollars to $80,000 space. And the support of PIDC would allow for you to grow your business um, in excess of $100,000. Definitely an opportunity for us to have a conversation. You must be a Philadelphia-based enterprise. And that means that you must service the Philadelphia area and maintain your business hub in Philadelphia. No minimum credit score. When we talk through um, PIDC versus looking at traditional bank relationships, um, traditional banks, um, when I was there, um, it, you know, required that you had a 660 or above. Um, we have opportunities to be able to 
uh, look at um, personal credit scores that may have a blemish or two, and we can support you through business support services, credit recovery services. Um, so when we talk through PIBC versus traditional banks, um, there is no minimum credit score. Of course, you want to have a strategy um, that stabilizes um, your business, a cash flow position that is positive. Um, and we can support that through your business plan um, efforts, as well as looking at the projection plan that I mentioned over three to five years. Much like that of a traditional bank, we do require a personal guarantee. Um, so of course it is your business utilizing your tax ID number um, for the actual finance request, but you as a 20% uh, or more owner of the business um, will stand as a personal guarantee. And you wanna think about the, the old adage, um, kind of wanting to ensure that there is some skin in the game. Um, so that's important. And then the willingness to pledge collateral. And collateral looks different for different types of um, product suites that we have. Commercial real estate would of course be that commercial real estate building. Um, we also look at accounts receivable as well as equipment. And then depending on the scope of the project, we do need to identify what those project cost estimates would look like. Um, so for example, if it were a commercial building that included a build out, um, in the case of a rebuild Philadelphia contract, you know, what is that scope of contract relative to the contract agreement? Um, so that is what a small business profile looks like for us. Now, keep in mind, if for any reason you do not match this profile, we have resources um, to be able to support your growth in um, other partnerships. Uh, we always like to say that um, the relationship that we have with the um, Philadelphia Commerce Department, we are kissing cousins. So if we can't provide you with that support, we have external partners that are willing to step in. And typical funding request, um, and it's gonna spark some interest for most of you, whether it's a retail space expansion, equipment, furniture, fixtures. My favorite is commercial and or mixed use real estate purchases. Um, right now, that is leading the charge within my um, portfolio. There are opportunities for you to create generational wealth, um, but more importantly, wealth within your business. Um, so if, you know, let's look at the opportunity for rent replacement. Um, much of what you're paying in rent uh, could be replaced with a mortgage and outside of having, you know, emergency capital because now you are the landlord, um, there is increased opportunities and you think you may not be in a space to own your own, um, you know, brick and mortar, most oftentimes you are. Business acquisition. Um, this is uh, probably one of the largest topics when we talk about post-pandemic um, and most businesses having to pivot their business. Um, so in some cases, you might have been thinking about additional aspects um, or segments of your business. And out of that came the opportunity to acquire something similar in scope um, so we do do business acquisition. Moving expenses, because you're going from renter to commercial, you know, real estate owner. We'll help you with the moving expenses because you're opening your second location. You've identified um, opportunities to grow your business within, you know, a six to 12 month window. Um, so we can provide open working capital for that. Inventory purchases, again, could be part of your strategy plan. And much of what we're going to talk about today is the contract receivables financing. Um, so most of the work that you're doing with Rebuild Philadelphia is contract receivables. So that's where we'll spend most of our time. It is unfortunate, but it is true that there are some predatory lenders. And as a result, um, you may need to refinance some of that high interest debt. We currently have applications where we're looking at former debt um, as high as um, 20 to 25%. We can take a look at that debt and refinance it so that it provides you with a stronger cash flow position. And when the traditional bank says no, most oftentimes PIDC can say yes. So let us take the opportunity to look at a traditional bank that may have declined your application. Um, there might be opportunities there for us to approve that application. And out of the scope of those financing needs, we offer working capital and equipment loans. 
the contract line of credit, which is um, a the rebuild contract line of credit was designed based on the contract line of credit. Um, so you'll hear me talk about the two um, very often. And then capital project loans. Capital project loans allow us the opportunity to be able to support a larger scale project um, with other traditional bank partnerships. And again, my favorite, the commercial mortgage loan. I love this page because it gives you an opportunity to see some of our clients. Eatable delights, we take pleasure um, in their catering services quite often. Um, tri triple bottom brewing, it's not Friday, but every day can be a happy hour. <laughs> um, so here is the rebuild promise. Um, that's why we are all here today. Um, and this um, is a um, direct um, promise from Mayor Kinney. Um, so you may have heard about the beverage tax. And um, I know that there were you know, debates about the beverage tax, but at the end of the day, it was a huge opportunity to create this historic investment of hundreds of millions of dollars to support neighborhood parks, recreation centers, and libraries across Philadelphia. No matter what part of um, Philadelphia you reside in, I'm quite sure that you're seeing some construction in an effort to be able to uplift these pivotal community spaces because you want to empower the neighborhoods. You want to promote economic opportunities, um, especially through diversity and inclusion. And one thing that is important when you think about rebuilding Philadelphia, the youth are a huge part of that. And the rebuild promise, um, you know, it is a promise um, from Mayor Kinney for more equitable Philadelphia. Um, and it almost seems like it's a promise to the neighborhoods um, and the youth that we serve within those neighborhoods and communities. Um, so out of the scope um, of um, the Rebuild Philadelphia, so the promise again is an inclusive um, opportunity for diverse businesses such as yourself um, and individuals um, empowering what the community has asked for and supporting the well-being of Philadelphians. There are varying stages of the Rebuild Philadelphia um, design scope. Of course, it all begins with, um, you know, build a design and engage a team. And then what does those site assessments or community opportunities look like? What area um, of the city um, stands to um, have, you know, economic development support? And then you come through with that um, schematic design and the community engagement. The community is important so that you understand what is needed, what is required, what are the challenges, what are the opportunities, you know, what are the strengths? And then that design development with the community engagement, and now we're obtaining permits. And then what happens? There is a pre-bid meeting because you're building out a construction team with the opportunities to support both the minority business enterprise numbers, um, which are at 35%, which are at um 35 to 50%, and then women business enterprises, which are at 50 to 20%. Construction takes place, and then there is a reopening, or in some cases, a grand reopening. As part of um, the development, there are 72 sites that were approved for the rebuild program. And of those 72 sites, um, 32 have been um, completed. Actually, I'm sorry, 22. Um, so there's a total of 50 that have been approved and are still set for um, pre-bid opportunities. And some of those projects um, run the gamut of roofing, lighting, fire alarms, electrical work, HVAC. And then of course, um, when you're thinking about the uh, outdoor um, environment, there's fencing, there's fuel pumps, um, field improvements, um, Playgrounds, of course, the spray grounds, um, not telling my age, but when we were younger, spray grounds was the uh, the um, fire hydrant on the corner of whatever block we were on. Um, but, you know, the generation this time doesn't understand even what those memories look like. Um, but athletic courts, which include basketball, in some cases, tennis, um, walking trails, as well as um, track fields. 
and then the sidewalk improvements and landscaping. For most of you that are here today, um, I'm quite sure that this slide identifies um, your construction specs um, or um, you know industry design. Here we just have um, a snapshot of some of those memories. Um, you know, when looking at groundbreaking opportunities, um, of course, success measures or success stories throughout construction. Um, most of you are probably aware of um, Torado, and um, he is a client of PIDC, a success story, um, because, of course, there are many opportunities where he served as a sub. Um, and, you know, just looking at his strategic plan and, you know, what that scope of growth looked like. Um, he's had the opportunity to also serve as a prime. So when you think about rebuilding Philadelphia, it's also an opportunity to be able to rebuild um, Philadelphia and its entrepreneurs. And um, Mayor Kinney, along with some of the youth within the community um, during the groundbreaking exercises. So this is what Rebuild Philadelphia is all about. And how do we get you to the point where you become part of this success? I mentioned earlier that we offer a traditional contract line of credit, and out of that design came the opportunity um, to really move forward with a rebuild contract line of credit. Um, I mentioned earlier that it bridges receivables. So it pretty much provides you an opportunity to bridge a gap between your invoices that are submitted to rebuild Philadelphia for a particular job and um, still have the opportunity to be able to. Um, meet the satisfaction of your operating expenses. So of course, at the end of the day, you may be responsible for you know, materials. You may be responsible for equipment. Of course, you have union dues. You still have payroll that you're responsible for um, while still operating as your business per se. So you also have your regular operating expenses and you don't want to have to commingle the two. So this provides um, the opportunity for you to bridge a gap. Um, it does require an assignment of the contract. So for whatever um, contract or um, rebuild opportunity that you've been selected for, that contract would be assigned to PIDC. We provide an advance up to a 90%. So 90% of that contract agreement and this is by far the best part, or one of the best parts. It's an interest rate of 1.5%. And we've made a commitment as an organization that that interest rate will remain intact going into 2024, an interest rate of 1.5%. The term is for 12 months, and it has renewable options. So, you know, if you begin the opportunity or a particular um, project, and it takes you into the following year, we can renew that so that it gives you the opportunity to be able to bid for additional jobs. Because keep in mind that there are still 50 projects left to go. The amount is anywhere between $50,000 to $300,000. And on top of that, we provide you with a mobilization grant of $5,000, which you can use to cover payroll, supplies, equipment, and fees related to the rebuild contract work. A mobilization grant does not have to be paid back. So with every application, you also receive a $5,000 grant. So similar to the rebuild contract line of credit, we have our traditional contract line of credit. Now this is used for any um, local, state, or government contract. Again, bridging the receivables between those contracts. So that comes by could be a PHA contract, a PCDC opportunity, uh, Drexel University, Children's Hospital, um, just some of those that we currently have within our pipeline. The interest rate sits at 3.5%, same terms, 12 months with annual renewable options. And the amount is 50,000 to 500,000. However, if you are a first time borrower of PIDC, um, your first year is limited to up to $300,000. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about bidding for um, other RFPs that are not associated with Rebuild Philadelphia. 
When I say that PIDC is driving growth to every corner of Philadelphia, we have the resources available to satisfy that for you. We have our working capital and equipment loan, provides term financing, and generally our term financing matches that of your leasehold agreements. So if you have a lease term of five years, generally the working capital and equipment loan will match that term. We have done in some cases seven years. Um, you know, um, there have been some that have been 10, but there are case by case scenarios. And the rates are fixed up to, and I'll need to update this slide. Only recently have we updated our rates to reflect 7%. Um, and it will pretty much um, stay there for a good period of time. If for any reason we do have an interest rate increase, you're looking at an additional 25 to 50 basis points. But please understand that given um, prime rate right now, which is sitting at 8.5%, um, this is um, a huge opportunity. Um, and in some cases, when you're lo looking at traditional bank relationships, it could be prime plus one and up to 3%. So that's 8.5 plus one, plus two, or plus three. <laughs> As I mentioned, the terms can be anywhere between three to five years, and it's usually determined by your um, current leases. And the amounts are 50000 up to $1 million. Contract line of credit we have discussed. But again, it is part of our normal suite of products. The capital project loan, um, they are increased opportunities if you have a larger project, which could include um, a business acquisition, improvements, or larger scale commercial real estate. And um, what it means to subordinate to a senior lender is, let's say that you have a current bank relationship where your current deposits are going. So they have agreed that they could provide you with a certain dollar amount based on the scope of your project, and you may have a gap in financing. So PIDC can make up that gap in financing. We will take second lien position, which you will never find um, a traditional bank would um, kind of take that second lien position. The only time that they'll do that is if they're taking second lien to a mortgage that they currently have, and that second lien most oftentimes is a home equity. But we will take second lien position to a senior lender um, to ensure that you make up the difference for a larger scale project. Um, and those amounts are generally 40% of the project costs up to a million dollars. So in this case, the larger bank would then take the 60% of that project cost. And my favorite is the commercial mortgage loan, 90% loan to value, term financing, rates that are fixed up to right now, 7%, terms that are anywhere between five to 15 years with a 25 year amortization and amounts are 50,000 up to 1 million. We love mixed use properties. And the reason for that is if there is any opportunity for you to have additional sources of income, you have rode past the same commercial space and you have been eyeing it and you have been putting it out to the universe and the commercial space on the lower level would support your business. Then you have these residential units upstairs. Those residential units would support the cash flow analysis, would allow for you to invest in your business. Rent replacement is possible. This by far is my favorite, favorite, favorite product right now. When we say 90% loan to value, as the business owner, we will expect that you will be able to come to the table with 10% capital injection. We have resources and opportunities to support that, again, with our kissing cousins at the Department of Commerce. Please understand that some of those um, additional programs that could offer you the support does require that not only is the business um, hub in Philadelphia or your base of operation in Philadelphia. It does also require that any um, owner who has 20% more of the business resides in Philadelphia as well. So just keep that in mind as we um, you know, engage in those conversations. But this right here is my favorite product. And let me tell you, if you've been riding past that same building over and over and you feel it in your spirit, let's talk about the commercial mortgage loan. And especially if you have an opportunity where your current um, lease is up for renewal, don't renew it. Come see PIDC. Own a piece of Philadelphia. 
All right. So there are um, collateral opportunities. Um, we do, as I mentioned earlier, require personal guarantees for any owner who has 20% or more equity in the business. There are opportunities towards a lien on business assets. Um, and those assets could be, of course, commercial real estate, um, com equipment. Understand that equipment is um, discounted. So it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to put um, or, or be able to look at that collateral at 100%, most of your equipment. Um, and then the assignment of your proceeds in the case of a city contract or a rebuild contract, the assignment of those proceeds would come back to BIDC. Enhanced collateral, again, the mortgage lien, because you want to own a piece of Philadelphia. Any liens on any certificate of deposits or marketable securities, a lien on your personal assets, and then, of course, if you have a spouse that's willing to serve as a guarantee as well. This is always um, a great area for increased discussions, because although you may have an opportunity to utilize as an enhanced piece of collateral, your current personal residence, please understand that PIDC is not in the um, business of wanting to take on personal real estate on our books. Um, this just provides us with um, a certain level of commitment that you're willing to provide um, in paying back this loan. Because at the end of the day, it falls back, it falls back on you, the loan um, repayment. Um, so you provide minimal risk if you say, here, here's my personal property. I'm going to put it up as collateral. Um, and it provides us with minimal risk because you're making a commitment to your business and you're making a commitment to, um, you know, hold on to your personal residence. This is what we call a deal flow. It's how um, an initial conversation turns into um, an actual executed application, approved and, and ready for you to, to to move on with your business plan strategy. That initial meeting and or conference call or connection call as I like to um, call it, starts with me. Um, we talk through, you know, your why. Um, different than a traditional bank, traditional banks, yes, they want to know the numbers. They wanna know how the numbers shake out at the end. And not to say that that's not important to PIDC, but with those numbers, what is your why? You know, why have you decided to start this business? What um, propelled you into this business? How do you expect to grow the business? That is important. Um, so we peel back the onion. Um, in some cases, it may seem intrusive, but it's really me getting to know you and all aspects of your business um, to be able to understand fully how BIDC can support and partner with you. You will then meet with... Um, other members of my team for a pre-approval and discussion. Um, we'll talk through your financials. You'll help us to clarify information that's on your financials. There could be year over year growth. We would ask you to explain, you know, what was that um, aha moment or what was the pivot for your business that allowed for you to grow your business year over year, 10%, 25%, 30%. Um, and then, you know, you go through full underwriting, a full application. I have my colleague Chase on the line, so he supports this process. And then we have the internal approvals. When we go in front of our loan committee and we advocate for the approval of the loan, we advocate for you becoming, um, going from being a renter to an actual commercial owner. We own that for you um, through both the loan committee and the board approval. And then once you get that approval, comes a commitment letter because we are committed to your growth. We are committed to driving growth to every corner of Philadelphia. You've been approved. And um, like Oprah says, you get a loan, woman. you get a loan, but they're approved loans. And then you meet with our legal team. We go through closing and disbursement. Fun times are had. Um, so here is my contact information. I know that there is something within our product suite that piqued your interest. But even if you want to utilize me as a thought partner, um, there's a question that you have, there is a roadblock, there is a challenge, there is an idea, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and let me provide you with this. 
with the support that we have. It may not come from PIDC, but it may come from many resources that we have. When I tell you that we have um, partnerships that um, you know you would be amazed at, um, please let us support you in growing your business, whether we're driving the growth or um, one of our partners is. So if you remember nothing of our presentation today, please understand that PIDC is committed to driving growth to every corner of Philadelphia. And that corner could be owned by you through our commercial real estate program, just a small plug. Um, and with that, we have um, you know, some of our current partners um, that we'd like to share some information with you um, as part of a panel discussion. Um, so with that, I will stop the screen. Stop the share. And Marlo, do we have time for Q&A or are we going right into the panels? Um, let's have a few questions. If any of our participants have questions, feel free to raise your hand, use the raise hand function. We will unmute you and let you ask directly of Camille. I see one of the questions in the chat box. If we are ready to get started, what do we need to do? I'm gonna provide my booking calendar for you inside the chat. Book some time with me. And Lorenzo, if you would just unmute your mic and ask your question. Uh, that was my question inside the chat. I was gonna ask that question. Okay, if we are ready to get started, what do we need to do? What did Camille say? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to give you my book and calendar. Now, Lorenzo, you have many, um, an advocate. When I talked about earlier, our external partners, you are a graduate of Goldman Sachs, are you? Correct? Correct. Yes. All right. So do you mind sharing with um, our group some of the highlights of Goldman Sachs and what you believe um, it has done for you both as a business owner, but more importantly, for your business? Um. Well, honestly speaking, it was it was it wasn't what I expected. It was more than what I expected. It was like um, it was an excellent um, experience. Um, uh, connected with uh, twenty two other members of the class, and um, it was basically like a meeting of the mindsets. Like everybody when it was in there was entrepreneurs, so you know we all had problems with different problems and. All I can say is just was a wonderful experience. Um, and the education was, you know, the education was excellent too because it teach you the nuts and bolts of the business going from, you know, for, um, you know, bank statements um, to marketing to to all aspects of business. But it was wonderful experience. Thank you. For so sharing. I do, I, you know what, Camille, if I can ask Lorenzo to just, repeat what you said originally you said it wasn't what you thought it was going to be it was better so what did you think it was going to be um i just thought it was going to be basic like just like information you know uh i just yeah just uh because i have uh, uh i just thought it was I, I didn't think it was going to be I guess as far as making the connections with people and like um, just really making the connections with the people and the uh, and the different speakers, like they they were, you could tell they were whatever they taught is what they actually had hands on experience with. All right, <laughs> that's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. Well, thank you, Lorenzo. Any other questions? Anybody? Raise your hand. Uh, we'll unmute your mic and you can ask Camille directly. Thank you, Lorenzo, for that um, endorsement of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. We just did an information session on this morning. Um, so we'll do another one prior to the application deadline. And that's for the cohort that begins in January of 2024. Any other questions? 
Let me really quickly, I know Camille mentioned it, but we have the newest member of the PIVC team who is working in our business lending unit. Uh, we'd like to welcome Chase. So Chase, if you want to unmute yourself and say hi to the folks and anything else. Just unmute your mic and you can. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Hey everybody, um, my name is Chase, uh, like Marla said, uh, I'm a new loan office officer here at PIDC. I'm um, really excited to get to work with all of you on a potential uh, rebuild line of credit and maybe more. Great, thank you, Chase. <laughs> and thank Chase, you, Chase. I, his first uh, project is actually a rebuild contract line of credit. So um, we didn't mention, but one of the opportunities we have is to kind of give you um, we can expedite um, any applications that come through and we're doing that with Chase's help. So understand that Rebuild Philadelphia is very important to us and ensuring that you have the access to capital so that you can bid on these varying jobs um, is just as important. So Chase has came in just enough time um, to provide you with that increased level of support. So he is someone to know. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, anything about Rebuild? I don't think we have anyone from the Rebuild team who's actually on this call. Um, but if you are interested, how many people just by use the raise hand function or you can use the chat function? How many people on the call are already on the mailing list for Rebuild? If you're on the mailing list for Rebuild, raise your hand. Um, so that Lorenzo, I see your hand raised. I um, participated in the cohort also. Oh, rebuild. great. The Rebuild Ready. With rebuild Ellen Ready Dillon. with Ellen Nalen and Surety yeah. Bond Associates. Yes. A great, a great PIDC partner. So I don't see any other hands going up. So I want to make sure not only are you learning about the financing products here at PIDC but you absolutely want to make sure you are on the mailing list for Rebuild so you can get informed every time there is an upcoming bid. Um, so I'm gonna try to get that before we end today's call and put that link in the chat. And I know Marla, several times I've mentioned um, Lorenzo's company, he is Ace of Diamonds. Um, and then we also have Urban Harvest Partnership, um, which is in the process of application. And um, so Chase, you'll, you should see those coming through soon. And Lorenzo, for any reason, if that link that I put inside the chat with my booking calendar still gives you issues, um, I will come through and see where I have some availability so that we can definitely get you um, through the process. Okay, thanks. Um, because in addition to um, Franny at uh, Rebuild advocating for you. Aisha um, Miller is doing the same. So understand that oh, you have great. A, team, cool. a team that is out there rooting for you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, Sandy, were you um, looking at any rebuild opportunities um, or any pre build, um, rebuild, pre bid meetings that you've been looking at? And that's Penovation Center. Cindy, you're welcome to unmute. Unless you're shy. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe in the lower left-hand corner, Sandy, you should have um, a microphone that currently looks red. If you just click on it, it should unmute you. But I'm not sure if you're on your phone, so it could be at the top. Or you can type inside the chat if you have a question. I just put the information in the chat for how you can get on the mailing list for Rebuild. 
please, once you're on that website, scroll to the bottom to the section that says get involved and you'll see an envelope and it'll say sign up for rebuild projects. Just click on that envelope and fill out your information. And every time there is a new project coming up with a pre-bid meeting, you want to make sure you follow the instructions on those pre-bids and show up. Show up and get the chance to meet, get the chance to meet some um, contractors who are interested in bidding, whether they are prime contractors or subcontractors. As Camille said, a, one of the great PIDC clients is Toronto Construction, who has served both as a subcontractor and a prime contractor. Um, and so he is committed to working with other smaller firms when he is a prime. So show up at some of those pre-bids, get the chance to meet Toronto Construction and some others. Other questions? Tamika, let's see, you say you have a small business um, and have not, and have been trying to expand um, and unable to qualify for inventory um, and or a commercial mortgage to expand. Um, so yes, and, and Tamika, correct me if I'm wrong, have you been doing that through um, traditional bank relationships? Um, and then you go on to say so many great ideas and new product ideas with no space to facilitate um, and being able to grow your business. So please, let's definitely um, schedule some time with me. Let's talk through um, what your strategy looks like. Um, because again, if the resource um, does not fall under the PIDC umbrella, we have many resources. A lot of times it's just knowing in what direction um, to look or review, and um, we can support that in any way. And I would also add when the two of you talk to remember the power of your business program, which could be um, a, a significant um, opportunity for you to learn more about business concepts, how you can raise money, where you how you can qualify for either bank financing or financing from economic development organizations like PIDC a, what we are, a CDFI, it's a um, certified financial um, community development financial institution, CDFI, and there are several in Philadelphia. So, so PIDC is not the only CDFI in Philadelphia, but, but we, we think we're one of the ones at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, when you talk to Camille, you'll talk about the CDFIs in the city where you can um, have opportunities to, to borrow, but certainly power up your business is the one that gets you on the right track to being prepared for financing. I mean, that's good to me because so you've had um, experience with PIDC before through the remobilization grant during the pandemic. Great. So yes, let's talk further. Um, I also see that Shanika has her hand raised. Shanika, you're welcome to unmute. We have about three minutes left, so you can kind of close us out. Again, if you're unable to mute, you can put your question inside the chat, but it looks like right next to where you raised your hand, you'll be able to unmute. Okay. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, unmuting you. Welcome to put your question inside the chat. Oh, there you go. Okay. Is can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was driving, so I'm like, oh my god, I can't kind of text. But um, thank you for having this um, session. Uh, I'm unfortunately I joined a little late. Um, but from what I caught at the end, 
is kind of like basically what I've been looking for. Um, th I am in my second year of business and am looking same thing for funds to expand. Um, what I need is of course a commercial space as well. Um, so I guess the first thing I wanted to ask is just, you know, do I just reach out to someone to discuss, um, I guess, mortgage options? Or is there like a rental option that you guys help with, like renting office space? Um, we do not. But if you um, scroll up further into the chat, I put my booking calendar. So you're mm -hmm. more than welcome to schedule some time with me and we can talk through, um, you know, your ideas and see, you know, what what the match could potentially be. Um, if you don't mind sharing, what's what industry um, are you in? So I currently um, own a home care agency, and what I wanted to indulge more into is um, teaching. So I used to be a teacher, um, and I'm into teaching like trades, um, like medical. I guess medical trades like CNA classes, medical assistant, phlebotomy courses, and stuff like that, um, and CPR. Okay, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, go through the booking calendar, schedule some time. Um, I'm not sure if you were able to see that last slide, so I'll put my contact information back in the chat. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely an opportunity for us to um, talk through um, what your project scope looks like and how we can support. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, it's two o'clock, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Special thank you to Camille for leading these webinars. We've been trying to get this information out into the marketplace to as many businesses as possible to take advantage of um, the Rebuild program. And as Camille said, in addition to the Rebuild product that we offer, there are any number of financing products that are available. You have to be, your business has to be located in the city of Philadelphia. Camille, I think, has put her meeting calendar in the chat. So please make sure you are taking advantage of that. Her email address, her telephone number, every possible way to get in contact with her is in the chat. So make sure you do that. Um, schedule that meeting to talk about um, so we can learn more about your business. And once Camille learns more about your business, you help her um, to know best how to direct you. Um, so with that, uh, Chase, thank you for joining us. Um, Camille, always thank you for trying to get this information out to as many people as possible. And for everyone who joined us on today, please make sure you go to the PIDC website under events and see everything that's coming up soon. Make sure you register and um, take advantage of all of these opportunities to help your business grow. So with that, everyone, have a great day. Happy Wednesday. And look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.